Hey there, I'm Eric. What information are you looking for today? Hey Eric, I missed the last meeting. Could you fill me in on the current challenges that we're facing with our AI chatbot project? Okay, um, let me check the project database. The main challenges right now are integration issues with third-party APIs causing delays, and the chatbot having trouble handling complex customer queries that need multiple steps of reasoning. Okay, got it. And what team members are working on this project and what do the milestones look like here? Okay, let me see. The team members are Alice, Bob, and Charlie. The current milestones are basic chatbot framework implementation by January 15, integration with the website and app by February 5, and internal testing and debugging by February 20. All right, awesome. And we were targeting for the product to be wrapped up by March, right? Let me quickly check that for you. Yes, the target launch date is March 1. Okay, cool. That's all I've got for you. Okay, great. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Nope, that's it. Thanks, Eric. You're welcome. Let me know if you have any other questions. Okay, so there was a quick demo of the project manager conversational voice agent that we're going to be breaking down today. As you can see, we have the workflow in N at N, and then we have the Eleven Labs voice agent, and it has access to a vector store that has all of our information on that Google Doc that you saw right here about our projects. So let's get into this build. Okay, so AI voice agents, they seem a little complicated, but they're really not. So I'm going to try to break it down um, in a way that's all going to make sense. And you're probably already 75% of the way there. So what we're looking at here is just a RAG AI agent within N8N. You've probably built one of these before. We have our chat model, we have the vector database, um, and that's really it. So today we're going to be breaking down three main things. We have our vector database, we have the N8N agent, and then we have um, the 11 labs voice agent. So. We're gonna start off here in N8N. N. We're gonna break down um, how we're talking to it through the webhooks, how it responds, um, what's going on here. And then we'll get into 11 labs and look at how we actually prompt the voice agent to extract the information it's looking for and then send that post request to us in N8N N so that we can hit this vector store and respond back. First things first, getting our information into the vector database in Pinecone. So we have our Google doc right here. As you can see, it has three projects. Um, we push that into Pinecone using this workflow here where we download it from Google Drive. We extracted the text and then we pushed it into Pinecone in a namespace called projects. So as you can see in Pinecone, we have a namespace called projects. It created four vectors, as you can see right here, four items. And then in our voice, or sorry, in our RAG agent, we need to make sure that we're sending this agent to that namespace again called projects. So it's looking through for the right stuff. So I know I went over that pretty quick, but you can download this workflow as well as this workflow from my free school community. The link for that will be down in the description. You will just come in here, click on YouTube resources. You'll click on the post associated with this video. And then you have all the files right here to download. You'll come into N8N and you can download them, or sorry, you can import them right here from file and then you'll have everything up and running. Um, good to go. And then if you wanna take your skills with N8N a little bit further, get some more hands-on help, please check out the paid community. We've got um, you know, a great community. They are asking questions, sharing builds, that kind of stuff. You get your questions answered a lot faster in here, um, as well as about five live calls per week. Great classroom section that's constantly growing as the space evolves as we're learning more. And yeah, I would just love to see you guys in here. You can check that out in the description. Anyways, back to the agent. So um, it's a super simple build. As you can see within my AI agent here, we set it up as a tools agent and I didn't even give it a system prompt because it only has one tool. And it's pretty easy because the query comes in and then it has to search through here. We define that this is a projects database. It says it retrieves information about our projects. So not much area for the AI agent to get confused here. If you hooked up more tools, of course, you'd want to prompt it a little bit, but um, it's a very simple rag agent, right? And if you've built one out in N8N before, you've probably connected it through the N8N chat trigger or you connected it to Telegram or email or Slack. It's pretty much the same thing here, except for now we're talking to it through voice using 11 labs. So you could even grab an AI agent that you already have built and all you have to do is switch out how are we talking to the agent and how is it responding back. So it's much more simple than you may think. In this case, we're sending information to the agent using 11 labs and then the agent communicates back and sends it back to 11 labs. So that's why we're using webhooks here. So we'll click into the webhook. As you can see, it's a trigger. So it's actively listening for the agent to conversate with a human and then send over that question. So we've got, um, this is a post method method because like I said, 11 labs is sending information to us, to N8N. We've got a URL here and right now it's a test URL. When the workflow in N8N is active, you this will switch to a production URL. So you'll have to switch out that URL in 11 labs. But um, for now we're doing test and we'll have to listen manually for each event. 
the path, all this does is change the actual URL, so you can play around with that if you just want to clean it up. And then as far as authentication, we don't need any, but for the response, make sure you use um, respond to webhook node rather than immediately or any of these other options. So it's, like I said, the same way that you would text it with Telegram, it would get your text, it would search through the vector database, it would think about how to respond, it would create a response, and then it would Telegram you back. It's the exact same process except for we're getting a query from 11 Labs, and then the agent is responding back to 11 Labs. So that's how this is gonna work. Okay, so let's click into an execution and actually see this happen. So this is the first question that we just asked in the demo earlier in this video. Let's look at the webhook trigger. Um, we've got all this stuff coming through, but really all we're looking for is the body, which is the parameter we sent over from 11 Labs called question. The question here is what are the current challenges for the AI chatbot project? So this question gets sent over to the agent, as you can see right here, json.body.question, and we just drag that in from down here where we can see everything that came back from the webhook. So now the agent uses this question to hit the tools it needs to, to create this output over here, which it eventually sends back to 11 labs. But let's click into the logs and take a look at what actually is going on. So um, what we see is that it's getting the question right here, which is what are the current challenges? It's gonna send that to the vector database tool um, and then we got a response. But before we get the response, the vector database tool has to go search through the vector database. So here's the question. Here is what's in the vector database. It has to search through the embeddings, as you can see here with the um, different parameters. And then it's gonna send this back to the OpenAI chat model to look through and actually create a response based on the question that the human asked in the first place. So now we got this output and finally it comes back to the agent where this is the final output that we got. And then that gets sent right over to the webhook. So hopefully that all makes sense. Yeah, it's really not too complicated when you really break down. And when you understand the fact that you could probably take this RAG system that you already had built out, this RAG AI agent system, and all you're doing is changing the input and changing the output. And then, you know, exactly, you're probably changing what's going on right here, um, what the agent's actually looking at as far as the input, but that's really as simple as it needs to be. Okay, so now let's look at what's actually going on within 11 Labs. So I'm in 11 labs, we're at the conversational agents section. Um, and this is the agent that we were just looking at. Eric, he was a project manager and I just, it's Eric because that's that's the name of the voice in here, as you can see. There you go, perfect. Um, but there's just a couple of things that we wanna set up here. So within the agent, the first thing to do is set up the first message. If you leave it blank, then when you click call, you'll just start talking rather than the agent talking to you. But we just said, hey there, I'm Eric, what information are you looking for today? Then we set up the system prompt. So this. You know, there's a lot of testing that goes where you set up a prompt, you call it, you talk to it, you see what it's like, and then you come back and change some things. But essentially, here's the prompt we have. You are a project manager responsible for providing accurate and helpful information about current projects. Your role is to actively listen to the user's question, understand their intent, and use the NADN tool, which I'll show you guys how to set up the NADN tool in 11 Labs in a sec. But you use the NADN tool to query the project database. After you receive the response from NADN, then you provide the user with a clear and concise answer based on that data. And then I came in here at the end and said, maintain a friendly tone, use filler words like um and okay when you're actively listening and waiting, don't repeat the question back to the user, just give a concise answer. So right here we're using the model LLM um, Gemini 1.5 Flash, it's the fastest as you can see. You have other options to choose from though. And then for temperature, um, I think default it's set at like you know 0.5 right here, but I set it at 0.8 basically just the randomness and creativity of the responses that you're gonna get from um, whatever LLM that you choose. And I think that it's fun to have it a little higher, especially with something like RAG right now. But um, you know, if you really needed like specific information on policies or you know stuff like that where it has to be um, precise, then you would probably want this to be lower. Anyways, um, token usage, um, you could hook up a knowledge base, but it would be a little bit more static. So we wanna use a vector database that it's gonna be called through NADN because then we can update the vector database with some sort of automated pipeline rather than just having like um, certain files in here, right? But anyways, this is where the magic really happens, the tools section. So as you can see, we only have one tool and it's called NADN. So what we did in here was we named it NADN because just easier for prompting is we understand that it's gonna be sending information to NADN and then waiting for a response from NADN. The description here is use this tool to access the project database. And then this is where we set up our webhook sort of request. So we're using a post because we wanna send information to NADN. And then we have the URL, which is just the one that we grabbed from this webhook right here. Click to copy, and then we pasted that right in there. And then you can leave all of this stuff as it is. Besides the body parameters, we actually do need to set up. 
So this is because, like I said, we're sending information over, which is going to be the question. Um, so here we need to add a description, which is um, this information is gonna be passed to the LLM and it's gonna describe how to extract data from the conversation that you're having with this voice agent. So right now, all you had to say was ask the user what question or questions they have. But if you needed to extract more, you know, more detailed information or more information, like if you're appointment setting or you're gathering information, like, you know, what's your name, your email, your um, phone number, all this kind of stuff, then you'd have to set up different parameters for each thing. So you'd have name, you'd have phone number, you'd have, you know, how many guests, um, what time do you want to come, all that kind of stuff if, you know, based on the use case. But right here, all we needed was the question and the description is question from the user. So that's why um, in N8N, when we're actually getting the response back from the webhook, it came through in the body parameter called question. So right here, um, we have question. Like I said, if you had a different use case, you would hear here, you'd have name, email, date, whatever it is, but this is question because we called this question right here. So that's all we had to do. Um, we save that and now we have um, pretty much this stuff set up and that is why it knows here to call the tool N8N um, using that webhook. Okay, so now that we got everything set up within 11 Labs, we'll go ahead and test out the AI agent. And just a reminder, everything in NNN right now is still in a test environment. It's not an active workflow, so we're using the test URL in our webhook. We would switch this to production and then it would be actively listening all the time. But for now, we have to manually hit test workflow so that it's listening for 11 Labs post request. So what I'm gonna do is talk to the agent, we'll ask a question. It's not gonna be able to access this vector database because the webhook isn't active. And then we'll ask it to try again and it should be able to get the information the second time. So let's do that. Hey there, I'm Eric. What information are you looking for today? Hey Eric, could you give me an update on our marketing dashboard project? Okay, um, let me check the database. It looks like the project is not in our database. Can you double check the project name? Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's called marketing dashboard. Can you try again? Okay, let me try again. The marketing dashboard project is currently on track. Okay, cool, thanks for the update. You're welcome. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Nope, that's it, thanks Eric. No problem, have a great day. Okay, so that's pretty much gonna be it for this one. I just wanted to come in here and make a quick one about how you connect 11 Labs to N8N super easily, uh, a lot more simple than you may think. At the end of the day, all we're doing is changing the input and the output. So if you had something like a personal assistant agent that had the tools connected to it and a pretty robust prompt, um, as long as the agent's getting a query from something that it can take this query, understand what it needs to do, how to take action with its different tools and then respond back, um, you could pretty much integrate this sort of voice agent into any other N8N agent workflows that you already have built out. Just a little bit of prompting will have to go into the 11 lab side of things um, like we talked about having to set up when to use different tools or when to send information to N8N, um, what parameters you wanna send over within your tools if you need to get more information than just like a simple query or a simple question. But um, from there, not too difficult. So I hope that this one helps you guys. Um, voice agents are gonna be a pretty cool space. I mean, they already are, but just heading into this new year, um, lots, lots more use cases as this technology gets smarter and faster every day. As always, if this one helped, please leave a like, um, comment what other use cases you wanna see with some voice agents. And I really appreciate you guys making it all the way to the end. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.